Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin. Don't call him baby, bird, and uncle. Dogs are better than humans can. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related. Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, we are answering our listener's question of, what is y'all's dream rides? What's going on, guys? What's up? What's up? I'm here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> been a rough week. Yeah. Yeah. Very rough. Yeah, I've been I've been in town all week, so that's that's good. Um, so we have someone now. He he doesn't have a microphone because we don't want to hear his voice, but he's in the studio with us, Team Bradley. After a year of begging us to come on the show, <laughs> we finally allowed him to join us. Is this the first time you've been to his house? No, second. No, second. Ooh. Second time. Well, second he, he came with Tatanka, right? Oh, For that's right. Well, third time, because he came here when we loaded up to go to Big Bend. Oh, does that count? I was here the night before. Well, I wasn't here then. You were here with my wife alone. Ooh. I'll have to ask Tracy about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. bastard. Like I was in <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, before we begin this episode, um, we have a special shout out to a fallen brother in arms, avid Between Two Wheels fan and biker. On Sunday, June 23rd, Master Sergeant Branson Pryor of the U.S. Air Force died at the age of 48 as, at his home near San Antonio. Our condolences to Sandra, Gwyneth, and Addison for your loss. We had an opportunity to ride with Branson during our Indian Test Rides Day, and he was an awesome dude to hang out with. Uh, his friends and fellow airmen have started a GoFundMe campaign to help raise money for his family. If anyone would like to provide support, a link to the GoFundMe page is in the show notes. All right, so let's move on to something a little bit happier. Um, dream rides. So... Yeah. It's it's funny going through and thinking about what our dream ride would be or rides would be. I look back on what I've already done, so I kind of put that in towards the end of this. So uh, weird, weird flex. Well, yeah. we've all had our own dream rides, right? And we oh, all yeah. have done stuff that you know on our own. We've done our own rides, so it's kind of cool. Let's let's hear about these and let's start with what do we look for in a dream ride, Justin? So when I think of dream ride, uh, a couple of things come to mind, and that is changing scenery. I think uh, one thing that we liked so much about Big Bend is every 20 minutes we had a completely different oh, yeah. view, whether yeah, yeah. it be long distance mountains or rolling hills or desert or even right along the uh, Rio Grande. So something that changes uh, every so often. I also, on the other hand, uh, I like very technical roads. Uh, the more technical, the better for me. I feel like that ranch road from um, Study Butte to Presidio mm-hmm. within Big Ben, that was pretty damn technical. I had a yeah. lot of butt pucker moments. Well, it is on the top 10 list of most scariest roads in America. I can see why, too. There was a lot of times where you come over the top and you're into a decreasing radius inverted camber very sharp turn <laughs> like and there's like yep. ah, well here it goes this is where i go down uh and then the third thing i mentioned was good road conditions mm-hmm. um arkansas had a lot of very good roads and yeah, that yeah. kind of made me understand that good road conditions are um that should be on the top of the list unfortunately that one section of the pig, pig trail that we went on wasn't the best but um, it wasn't though. dirty. Yeah, I feel like I would rather have a rough road than a dirty road. Like for example, oh, when we do yeah, the yeah, Twisted yeah. Sisters, we don't know if we can come around the turn and the, half the mountain's going to be washed out. Right. So it's it's kind of hit or miss. But um, a clean road mm-hmm. is on my top list. All right, Ken. Uh, you know, go, go along with what Justin said. I definitely want scenery. Mm-hmm. I mean it. I mean, you don't want to drive through fucking flatlands and look at nothing. I mean, I guess unless that's your thing. <laughs> I mean, hey, there's something for everyone out there. Yeah. But uh, I want things to obviously see scenery, but I want things to see off the bike mm-hmm. as well because I, I like to stop. Yeah. I like to stop and look. And the, those little weird little shops that you come across in these small towns, I love those things. That's yeah. why, like, I wasn't complaining when we were in Arkansas when, you know, TJ was like, oh, guys, I'm so sorry we're stopping so much. I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah. That's, I, this is part of the trip for me. Yeah. I, I want to stop and see stuff, ex- especially if I'm not from there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
for me again with y'all scenery um to justin's point technical roads um, i really prefer mountains or massive hills um and th- again to your point things to do off the bike because you're only you know in new areas i'm only really wanting to ride during the day yeah so something to go do at night you yeah know, sightseeing things like that that's that's important for me so agreed let's move into what location would be a dream ride for on the road bikes so let's start with you ken so for me i have always wanted to even before i got into motorcycles is take the pacific coast highway from top to bottom bottom top doesn't matter so is that san diego to vancouver i i think so i mean it's it's hundreds of miles long it's canada to mexico yeah okay okay and i've always wanted to ride that i Mm -hmm. mean or even just drive it sure you see it in all the movies, you know. I mean, all YouTubers are all out there making their videos. It just looks like an awesome ride. The scenery's changing. Mm-hmm. It's generally, I mean, obviously, you know, weather changes. But, you know, it's California. Most of the time the weather's pretty nice. Right. It's not until you get into the Pacific Northwest that you have to really worry about the, you know, the daily rain. rain cold yeah. weather at night, yeah. things like that. But, yeah, I've always wanted to ride the Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> top to bottom, bottom to top, doesn't matter. Just go fucking do it and spend the, and and do it all in one shot. Mm-hmm. You know, take the time to go and be able to stop and see everything and take pictures and see all the sites that are around there and make a full trip out of it. Yeah, Tracy and my friends, they went and did it and they loved it. Now they came from Alaska South. Jesus, oh, that'd be awesome. So I think they had their bikes shipped to the uh, Washington Vancouver border, rode up into Alaska, and then came back and just rode all the way down until they hit I ten, and then came out, came back to Texas. On I, I, I think it'd be great. Yeah, uh, I think it, they did it in a week, just the PCH. <laughs> did someone just ring your doorbell? Someone I, definitely just rang the doorbell. <laughs> someone had to. Uh, <laughs> Oh, gotta love having uh, studio puppies. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> They're about to start howling. They're howling. They're already howling. Uh, <laughs> All right. They they've calmed down. All right. Uh, for me, I want to ride Pikes Peak region because you know there's a bunch of area a bunch of really cool roads out there in pikes peak um so i've seen tons of videos pictures um of the area and i just think it'd be an amazing ride plus it's in colorado so when you're not on the bike there are some festivities you can go do yeah um and it's it's right there within 50 to 100 miles of colorado springs yeah so you have a pretty big city there college girls well and it's a military town. Yeah, it's a military town. So Dependas. <laughs> Deployment <laughs> widows. Yes. God. <laughs> I'm gonna be Jody um, this time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and then also on my my other ride would be the PCH as well. Um, just awesome road scenery for days and plenty things to do when you're not riding. So I'm right there with you on that one. Justin? It's funny how we all like are on the same page. So I have the Pacific Coast Highway. It's actually US 101. I just found that out when I was looking it up. I was trying to see how long it is. It's about 1,600 miles top to bottom. Um, but I want to do it north to south. Reason being is because most of that highway runs along the coast. If yeah. you're on the right side of the highway, you're close to the water, less things in between you and yeah. the water. Right. Plus, Perfect. I think going from, you know, forest down to desert is cooler than going from desert up to forest. Fair enough. But Could be. Yeah. I've always wanted to to either uh, that's the the problem living here in Texas is like in order to do it north to south, you're going to have to make like a 4,000 mile loop. <laughs> oh yeah. You have to go either that or find a a shipping company to send it up there, and then you fly out, which I would like to do because I, I four thousand miles sounds terrible because that would have to be you know a month long trip if you want to do it right and you know oh, yeah. have time for the stops. Well, because I mean, even riding from here up there, 
you're, you're not just going to cannonball up there. Yeah. You're going to want to stop and see everything on the way as well. Correct. Well, the other side of that, too, is you could trailer up there mm-hmm. where if you have four people who are wanting to do the ride and you had two vehicles trailering two bikes, you could totally do it. Split sharing the ride. You can get up there in about 35 hours. Yeah. But It'd be miserable. I mean, hire someone to... Well, a spouse who doesn't ride could drive the vehicles back. It's and still a logistical nightmare. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Sounds, uh, I'm exhausted already. Yeah. yeah. I don't but it's, do it it's about $400 a bike. Turn, turn it off. I don't want to fucking do this no more. It's, it's about $400 a bike to ship it from Texas up there. Worth it. I think and that'd be way worth it. Flying into Seattle, you could probably fly out of, out of San Antonio for about $300 one way. Yep. Worth it. So seven hundred and fifty bucks ish to get you and your bike up there. Yeah, that sounds way better. That, I could I could definitely do that. Yeah, and you're not paying for the additional hotel rooms or whatever driving. So it's I'm not going to say it's a wash, but it's enough of a Shit, wash. I'd say it's a wash. I think that's, it's a wash if you factor in gas and food and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, but that's seven hundred dollars, seven fifty per person. But I don't fucking care about the, you guys. I'm worried about myself. The time savings <laughs> is where it really comes in. To exactly. Play. Oh yeah. So that's that's where you get the huge benefit there. Because I mean, even if you cannonballed it, it'd still take you pff, two days just to get there. At least. Yeah. How far is it from here to Seattle? I was going to look it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fucking up there. Because I've done the the math from here to Sturgis, and I'm just like fuck. Unless I can take three weeks off to make that trip, I'm never riding to Sturgis. Just oh, because yeah. I would not want to do that. Well, I, I have set a new rule after trailering to the Ozarks. I've set a new rule. If I am leaving the state of Texas or if it's longer than 500 miles one way to get there, I'm trailering. Yeah. So so according to Google Maps, it is 2,145 miles, <laughs> one day, and nine hours. Wow. Straight. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what, 34 hours straight? Yeah. Nine? No, it'd be 33. 33, but, yeah. But take into account, you're only going to probably drive for 16 hours each day. Yeah. So you're looking at two and a half days to get there. Two and a half days of 16 hour days. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> uh, but however, you could do your iron butt the first day. Nope. <laughs> How many miles was it? 2,145. 2,145. Wow. That's ridiculous. And you're cutting through mountains. So oh, yeah. See, I don't want to do like 500-mile days that take about four and a half days to get up there. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking three weeks because I would want a week to get up there, a week to spend there, and a week to get back. Oh, yeah, because you leave here and you go through New Mexico, corner of Colorado, Utah, up through Idaho. Which corner, sounds like an awesome ride. <laughs> corner of Oregon up into Washington to Seattle. Yeah. So, yeah. If we wanted to do PCH, it'd be a three-week trip. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> yeah. That would soak up every bit of vacation Exactly. I <laughs> so, yeah. Not not happening. Not unless we could become, like, super rich day traders anytime soon. But, yeah. <laughs> but, actually, my other ride on this list was uh, Durango, Colorado, which is in the Pikes Peak, yeah. Colorado Springs area. Yeah. My dad's – that's still number one on my dad's list. So, that's that's on my list. All right. So, that one, though, is a lot more doable because it's, what, four hours north of Amarillo to get to Colorado Springs? You said Durango, Colorado? Yeah. Or just Colorado, or Colorado Springs. Springs, yeah. It's probably oh. four or five hours north of Amarillo, I think. Mm. I'm trying to think how long it took because we went to Colorado Springs when I lived in Sanderson. And I was trying to remember how, how long that was. It's uh, 13 hours. Yeah, so it's about from, eight from, hours. From here to Colorado Springs. So it's about eight hours from here to Amarillo, right? Huh. Yes. So, yeah. That'd be pretty much from here to Arkansas. 860 miles. 860? 860. Ooh, okay, never mind. But... The difference between that route is the speed limit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of highway there. Yeah, a lot of posted 80. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. we could totally beat that time. <laughs> I've driven that road a lot. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about um, locations for on-road bikes. After we hear from Nutsack, let's talk about off-road. 
Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com slash B2W. That's N-U-T-S-A-C dot com slash b the number two w to get yours today and we are back so talking about off-road bikes now this could be adv or dirt bike whatever oh i didn't know we had dirt bike options okay i didn't, um, I didn't think about dirt bikes either. that's right i can, I can do it on the fly <laughs> <laughs> um for this one i want to do baja california in mexico uh, for people who don't understand geography, there's a strip underneath California called Baja California, which is actually in Mexico. Uh, but awesome, awesome stuff. And I found tons of routes oh. for oh, yeah. 100% off-road. You go hit you know, some hot springs. You can go ride along the beach. Find the donkey shows. Oh, of course. Oh, oh yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, definitely TJ straight south. And just have a blast. And I would think doing that on an ADV bike, the the road or the the area out there is super clean, and it's it's already heavily traveled. Oh yeah, and you wouldn't have to worry about being broke down and lost for yeah. Ever. And even recently, looking at some of the blog posts and things about that trip, it's safe. Oh yeah, a lot of federales are out there, and it's you're riding pretty much parallel to a lot of resorts so for me doing that now since i haven't ridden off-road i don't know what really to expect but from aesthetics that's that would be one of the off-road adventures i'd want to take oh yeah nope no (laughs) not a fucking chance Two things. One, fuck Mexico. I don't care how safe they say it is. Fuck that. All it takes is one person to spot three white boys on dirt bikes, and yeah, we'll be fucked. <laughs> and two, there's a reason why they have a uh, the, the Baja Rally out there, and that's because that terrain is hard as fuck to ride through. It's a lot of sand. Sand mm-hmm. is very hard to ride in. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I'd still give it a shot. It just means I'll have to go a Five. little bit slower. No. You have to go a lot go faster. faster. Yeah. Okay. Again, never off-road. <laughs> so. And I just so we can recap from last episode where Justin called me out for being too scared to get a dirt bike, I've already cleared it with a wife. <laughs> <laughs> dirt bike is happening this year. All right. This year. Fuck. Okay. So before <laughs> December, it will happen. All right. Well, so there it is. Let's hope these stocks work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Justin, since you were shaking your head, what would be your dream off-road bike location? So I will do my dirt bike one before I get into ADVs because I thought we were just talking about ADVs. Okay. Uh, dirt bike is going to be Ocotillo Wells. That's in California. Uh, it's pretty much, if you draw a line in between I-10 and San Diego, it's pretty much right there in the middle. Okay. Uh, anytime you've seen, like, um, like, professional motocrossers riding, like, super dope you know rides it's going to be in Ocotillo okay the monster videos yeah those were all filmed in Ocotillo Wells it's it's like how can I how can I say this like what the pig trail or the tail of the dragon is to Harley riders Ocotillo Wells is to dirt bike riders okay it's like the pinnacle of good riding cool cool um and that's really the only dirt bike one I have mm. uh talking about ADVs uh since since uh you got a little Exotic. I decided to go completely the opposite and uh, say the Australian Outback. So <laughs> I've driven half <laughs> of that in a car, and it it's flat. Yeah, and Hot. there's like ten thousand creatures out there that, that can all kill want, you. All they all want to kill you. 
Um, they don't got snakes, guns though. But, but the <laughs> other snakes. side of that, yeah. and I would I would think that part would be a logistical nightmare. Oh, for sure, because yeah. of fuel. This is this is called dream. Sure, sure, dream rides. <laughs> yeah, so, so we got the we got the trail vehicle. So yeah, with all our fuel and water and food, yeah, okay. medical supplies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anti venom. <Anti-venom. laughs> An entire bike and parts. <laughs> exactly. Like when I was watching those, uh, I can't remember what it was called the the big the big ride or whatever uh, that documentary. I said it was thirteen thousand miles that they're oh, riding, yeah, yeah. and they had two full bikes worth of parts in their parts vehicle. Yeah. And they still ran out of some stuff. Well, and they still had to go get a completely different bike. <laughs> yep. Yeah. At one point, because <laughs> that guy couldn't ride his BMW to save his life. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, I just got greedy with it. Um, Moab, Utah, my uncle just recently went through there. Uh, he rides ADV bikes, which I just recently found out. So that's kind of cool. Um, and just the pictures he was getting was just ridiculous. Um, well, I know the area of Moab in general is just gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I just adding the other pleasure of being on two wheels yeah. it would just fucking make it even better. So that's cool. cool. And then I didn't get specific on this one, but I just put Nevada just uh, outside the Las Vegas area, like the Area 51 type <laughs> stuff. Because it exists now. It does. Yeah, yeah. They, they did. They did de- yeah. declassify it. Exists now. They, they admitted to its existence. Yeah. Yeah. Robert yeah. Lazar was like, I fucking told you. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know who Robert Lazar is, look at the documentary. It's pretty you know, You know how many people finally just sat back and they went, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How many people went on their forums be like, "This is UFO guy 1932 <laughs> signing off." <laughs> uh, okay, so we have Australian Outback, the the Wells place, Akatio Ak- Wells, Akatio, and Moab. Just that general area of the United States. Okay, I love the desert. I'm. I'm so attracted to the desert. Like you see, um, did you guys watch the new black mirror season? No, I've caught a couple episodes only because of my daughter. Okay. Well, um, Eric from that 70s show, he makes an appearance again. Okay. He's basically the Mark Zuckerberg, uh, super, the guy that made Facebook. Um, but he does like this 10 day silence retreat and he's got like this glass house on the top of a mountain out in the desert. And I'm just like, fuck yes <laughs> that sounds so awesome but uh yeah yeah that's, that's country, arizona Nevada. oh for sure yeah <laughs> well that plus i just love the desert but yeah i i love the desert right before a rainstorm oh yeah that's the oh. best oh and then mm-hmm. and then right after too. like four hours after we have well in most of the deserts that i've been to you have that sage smell oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh god it's mm-hmm. awesome oh yeah but okay, so Ken, let's hear your um, off-road dream ride. All right, so I picked Moab and Baja as well. <laughs> okay, I, I just, for for all the reasons we talked about, mm-hmm. just, I think it'd be great rides. Uh, one of the other ones, Death Valley. I don't know why. I mean, it's just a fucking it's desert. So fucking hot there, and it's just <laughs> fucking hot. But I've always yeah just wanted to go there, and I know there's thousands of trails out there that you can sure. take yep. and i think it'd be great specifically to go like backpacking not backpack backing but like moto camping yeah through there yeah, yeah uh minus you know the dying of heat stroke and but it's a dry heat yeah no, it's a dry heat oh, okay <laughs> it is a dry heat <laughs> i will me i will admit that it is definitely a different kind of heat but I've been through Death Valley one time, and I remember I got out, and literally it feels like you're just being hit in the face with a, a hair dryer. Yeah. Like how we feel like when we're riding in certain days of the summer here, that's just yeah. what it feels like. Yeah, the entire time. The entire time. But yeah. then it gets really cold at night. So it does. It, it, yeah. Your body will never acclimate. But yeah, I've always wanted to, always wanted to ride. I it's think it'd be fun. I don't know shit about it. Yeah. I don't know, it's hot as fuck during the day, cold as fuck during the night. But it's got scenery for days. But, but it, yep. it does. I mean, yeah, I realize a lot of it's flat, but it, there's a lot of mountains there, and yeah. depending on where you go, and yeah. Do you great. know H3 in Iraq is also a dry heat? Oh, oh awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, so is that on your list, or? <laughs> <laughs> no. no not I mean, not. <laughs> we can get some fucking motorcycles and go to, like, Qatar and fucking tear up the dunes there, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. all about that shit. Doha. Yeah. You rent everything there. Abu Dhabi. Well, 
no, I can go back to Abu Dhabi. I have a new passport. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go to Abu Dhabi and go rip it up in UAE. Yeah. I mean. UAE's pretty dope as well. That'd yeah. be dope. I just. 90% of that country's desert. I'd be you gotta so think, terrified. You gotta think, no, you got to think, though. These places like Doha and like UAE, Dubai, those are tourist locations. So like they have agreements with the fucking terrorists to be like, no, no, no. Put your shit away. <laughs> just come here and have fun. Yeah, but we're talking about going out in the desert, which is <laughs> Yeah, but you're No, as long as you don't hit Yemen or Oman, you're good. I mean fifteen there's... Yemen Road, Yemen. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so uh, just brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of mine are good. No. No. All right. So let's let's talk about some of the bucket list rides that we've already done. <laughs> it's going to be so short for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just not seeing what you got. <laughs> okay. All well, right, Ken. Take it away. Yeah. Well, let me start this off. So the bucket list items that I've already hit on my bike is Big Ben, the Twisted Sisters, and the Pig Trail. Okay. I mean, those are. I mean, those are what I've done. Those are what we have close well I mean, minus you know the pig trail sure but i mean even if we were to just we could just go to big ben for the day i mean you theoretically could 13 hours each way <laughs> <laughs> depends on how fast you go true maybe true. on a day on in mars maybe <laughs> that's a nerd joke because the days are 25 hours all right, all right justin calm, calm down <laughs> Um, my list says exactly the same as Ken. You guys have to remember, like, before I met you guys, I was on a sport bike. True. So true. I think the farthest I ever went on my sport bike was cross town. No, I went <laughs> off. I didn't do any of like the Twisted Sisters or anything like that. Um, I think Blanco or not Blanco. Blanco um, Road. I took Blanco Road all the way out to. I think it's uh, Bernie. Oh yeah, that's wow. about as far as I. I think ninety five miles is like the longest. Crushing I ever the went, miles bro. there. Huh? Well, then you went from the sport bike to the eight eighty three, which wasn't much better. Yeah, and literally when I went to Austin the first time I met you guys, that was my first real out of town trip. Oh wow, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> so I I really don't have that much. I mean, on the grand scheme of things, I'm very fresh as far as the the roads go. But okay. now I've ridden pretty much every highway within 200 miles of here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. So because of just when I was in the military where I lived, I had access to a lot of really cool areas to go ride. Yeah. So this is the time I'm going to – I can go to the restroom now, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, the you know Big Ben, the Ozarks, ridden both of those twice. Um, but this was the first time to ride – them with Tracy, so that was kind of cool. Um, Dill's Gap, which if people don't know it, that's the Toe of the Dragon, which um, is in what states? It's, Just so people know, it's in Tennessee, Tennessee and South Carolina area, so it kind of rides the border there. Um, but I've ridden that, I've never ridden it on a Harley, so I want to go out there and ride on a Harley. I rode it on my Jixer oh, when I was back in your sport bike days, yeah, yeah. when I lived in Pensacola. Um, God damn, could you be more stereotypical military? <laughs> Living in Pensacola he's, with a Jixer. He's trying to be like fucking Tom Cruise and yeah, Top Gun. Exactly. How many monster stickers did it have on it? None. None. Oh, bullshit. None. I, I didn't have didn't any have monster stickers. Direction. They were rippets. Oh, rippets. <laughs> <laughs> For all our military folks, yeah. y'all know yeah. what's up with rippets. Um, the Blue Ridge Parkway, Tracy and I rode that when we lived in Charlotte. Um so Mina, if y'all are not familiar with Mina and Tallahina, um, it's up in Oklahoma. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Gorgeous yeah. rides up there. Um, that was um, Jace from uh, Fast Life. That was his number one ride. Oh, yeah? Yep. Sweet. Um, when I lived in Bahrain, I was able to ride the what? Saudi coast. From, from where? From where? Bahrain. Oh, okay. All right. It's a little tiny island country off the coast of Saudi Arabia in the Arabian Gulf. Got it. Um, but I rode from Kuwait City all the way down, and we were, at the time, the lady who owns all the Harley shops in the Middle East, uh, she had just opened up the Kuwait City one. So we rode from Kuwait to Dammam all the way down into Doha and into the UAE. I feel like these are made-up names. 
I feel like these don't play. don't exist. <laughs> Learn your geography, son. <laughs> no, fuck I mean, I, I rode with Jam- with your mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so this, I call it the Saudi Coast Highway. It's got some other name, but I can't pronounce it. Uh, I was able to ride up in the Swiss Alps, which was fucking amazing. Um, you can only do it during the summer months. Oh, yeah. Of about a three-week window there. Not with that attitude. Yeah. Uh, and then also <laughs> was able to ride Normandy. There's a bunch of guided tours uh, through Normandy and kind of the approach from D-Day and the sweeping of from the beaches all the way up into France. So each day was like a 100-mile trip. It's just beautiful, awesome. And then you also have that tinge where all these Marines and soldiers. Oh, yeah, where we came, came in and fucking yeah. kicked ass. Yeah. Did you ride in a serpentine pattern? No. No. Anyways, um, <laughs> so for me, I want to ride Dills Gap, the Alps, and Normandy again, but with Tracy this time. Uh, you know, coming in, you know, from the military, and then meeting Tracy, I was able to go to all these areas, but she never got to experience it with me. Oh yeah. So I tell her stories. She's like, "Oh God, I wish I could do that." I, same like places that I tell my wife that I've been. Yeah. So aren't y'all doing Dills Gap this summer? We were going to. Ah. Uh, there it is. But no one wanted to take us up on the offer. And the friend of ours who was originally going to be able to make it, he did too many other events, so now yeah. he has to work. Um, That's basically the the pot I fell in as well. Yeah. yeah. So we are still looking at doing it, uh, maybe an early spring trip for next year mm. uh, where everyone's vacation has reset. Yeah. And we can get more people to go. But we're going to totally trailer out there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, That's way the fuck out there. But um, so closing argument coming up after the break from Brush Hero. But this one's a little unique. If you prefer washing your own bike and car, Brush Hero is the ultimate DIY detailing tool for you. 100% water powered. All you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride. With the various interchangeable brush heads, you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine, your rims, and anywhere else road gribe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order. All right, and we are back. So to this episode's closing argument, is do you prefer to ride with a passenger or not? And what are things you have to do differently when having a passenger on the back? Mm, 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 mm. I feel like I should go first on this one. Cause, <laughs> actually, no, I think you should go first on this one. I'll go second, and I'll let Ken roundhouse <laughs> kick it in the face when we, when we exit. All right. Um, for me, I fucking hate having passengers on my bike, uh, especially Tracy, because she is a rider. So she knows every little mistake I make. Yep. So we did a trip from Cincinnati, Ohio to Dallas. Fuck that. And she was on the back and we, we did it in one day. So a thousand miles or 998 miles. It rained every minute of that trip, <laughs> except for when we stopped for gas. God damn. <laughs> so it was a miserable ride. She fell asleep a few times and it was just busting me in the back of the fucking helmet. Yep. <laughs> uh, but I... I just don't like it, and my reason for not liking it is I don't like having other people's lives in my hands. I figure I want to ride the way I like to ride, which is pretty dangerous and loose. So I don't want whoever's on the back to go through that. Um, So for me, when I have someone on the back, I have to calm my riding down a lot. Um, I can't cut through, you know, it's a seven foot gap between a car and i cut that that gap oh yeah well you're gonna have someone squeezing the dog shit out of you when Mm -hmm. you do because they don't understand that your bike's only five and a half feet long so you have plenty of space oh yeah uh so for me i i do not prefer it however comma if it is a good looking chick with some big old titties yeah she can ride on the back with me tracy probably wouldn't like it i probably wouldn't say yeah Mm. But that, that uh, might start some arguments. <laughs> I'd have to ride in the back behind no, Justin's no cameras. cameras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will tell gun that ride. Okay, Justin, what about you? 
Uh, so I'm kind of on the same page. I really don't fucking like it. I really don't. So and you're so lucky that Mrs. Bird don't doesn't listen to our podcast. Oh, she doesn't listen to it at all. So She's yeah, never listened to an totally episode. You can totally say whatever yeah. you want. I fucking one. hate it. I really <laughs> fucking hate it. And that's like the only downside of getting the the battle donkey is like now she wants to go on every single ride and used to it'd be like oh well we're going 300 miles you don't want to go on that long ride now so she's just like i'll hop on the back and (laughs) so really don't fucking like it um the reason why is kind of to your point i have to change how i ride and it's not to the point of where it's like i have to change it because i don't like having someone else's life in my hands it's just i don't i don't feel comfortable Cause like when I when I go into a corner, I know if I'm by myself, if I throw my weight a certain way, the bike's gonna handle a certain way. There's there's too much of a variable hanging off the back that could, you know, throw the weight off. Throw the yeah. weight off. And see, I, I don't know about you guys. For me, if I'm hitting corners, it's not every time I'm gonna lean into it. I yeah. may counter lean. Yeah. If if I'm hot dogging it, let's say the boopum for dominance ride. <laughs> Yeah. If I'm hot dogging and I know I'm coming in way too hot, I'll throw my body the opposite direction of the turn and just crank my bike over because I know I'll make the turn. But if I have an extra 100 pounds or more behind me. Those tiny people. I'm about to say, there ain't nobody in our group of 100 pounds. Come on. <laughs> well, Brad. <laughs> there it is. See, we had to get one one jab. Um, but, yeah, it's that's what it comes down to is I don't necessarily know what I'm going to be doing. Yeah. Because it's it's all situational. That so, um, two more things I want to point out is one, also uh, certain actions pro- provoke different actions. Mm-hmm. So, for example, when we were in Arkansas, there was a time where I can't remember when it was, but it was we had to get on the brakes pretty hard, mm-hmm. and she just smashed the shit out of the back of my head. <laughs> I mean, it was just full on fucking headbutt. Helmet and check. I hate that. Was that was- was that when you checked her? <laughs> no, 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 no. That one was expected, so that one was kind of funny. <laughs> I'm so glad you saw <laughs> and got to appreciate that moment. Um, but the other thing, I will, I do have to give credit where credit is due. When we were coming back from Austin, we did hot dog it there on the interstate for a while, and I will say that she reacted very well. She handled it a <laughs> lot better than I was expecting her to. I asked her about it. She said pretty much I just knew that uh, – you were in control and you weren't going to listen to me even if I told you to slow down. So I just tried to get in my, my, my happy, my happy zone yeah. and just kind of tried to ignore it and basically understood that I knew what I was doing and just kind of went along with it for the ride. She sure. said she didn't like it, but, uh, she reacted well. I will say Tracy is an excellent passenger. She hates it more than I hate her being a passenger. It's Cause she's a rider. Yeah. But yeah, she, she can, gauge what's up ahead and she'll know because of how much we've ridden together okay he's going to dip in here i'm just going to hold on and she's just learned and i think every passenger needs to learn this figure out which shoulder you want to lock on to and just whatever that shoulder does follow it yep yeah keep and your spine aligned spines in line and that's what folks uh, new passengers have no fucking clue how to do so alicia has gotten that part down what she still does i would say about 60 percent of the time is she thinks that once we go under 10 miles an hour everything all the rules go out the fucking window yeah you've told me this before so like as soon as we come to a stoplight she's yeah. sitting back stretching i'm like no do that when we're going 60 <laughs> yeah. in a straight line exactly. don't fucking do it when we're coming up to a, a like a stop sign or a stoplight when i need you as close as possible one little twitch can yeah, f- not not moving my my the, your little gyroscopes have quit working yeah yeah like there was a time in arkansas where i almost dumped it right before we went down that really curvy road down to the the grassy area when when david had that that close call i had to stop short right oh, behind yeah. him and we were on a, a bank so i went i went down to, to catch myself and she was fucking bobbleheading back there and i was like god damn it get up close <laughs> <laughs> so yeah all right but it could be worse i could be ken all right ken let's so, yeah let's so hear my, your diatribe so my wife doesn't doesn't listen to the show either so i fucking hate having a passenger as well 
<laughs> now, I will say that I do enjoy experiencing things with my wife while she rides with us. Mm-hmm. But to the exact same points that y'all have made, I don't want to be responsible for her. She was a rider too. She was also in a scary accident for her, so that's given her some PTSD and some paranoia. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I get on it or, I mean, I switch lanes or whatever, I get fucking death grips on my fucking love handles, yeah. and I have a lot of love handle there to fucking grab onto. <laughs> She's got big hands. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And then we'll, we'll get somewhere and I'll be like, oh, did you see this? Did you see that? No, I had my eyes closed. <laughs> Then why? Just why? Why are you why, here? Why? Just get in the car. Follow us in the car. Exactly. So, so I, I think I have a, a way for you to help her appreciate your riding. Put her on the back of the bike with me. Right. <laughs> and I will not put any nannies on. <laughs> I will ride my ride. Man, and like, what? She nearly killed me in freaking Big Ben. Big Ben was yeah. the worst one. Like, yeah. yeah. What the f- like. So we were on this. Off the bike. We were on this right hand <laughs> decreasing radius turn, and I can't Tight remember. Tight turn. I can't remember if it, if it went right, and then we were going up, or we were going. You're, down. We were going down. Yeah, we were going down. Yeah, we were descending. And so, I mean, we were going the speed limit. We weren't going fast. No, that was a ra- ra- a road that you went the speed limit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there was no and corrections on that one. So I, you know, I didn't. I didn't lean into it. I counter leaned. I mm-hmm. had plenty there. Well, I got big feet, so they kind of hang off the floorboards a bit. And no matter what bike I've been on, they all hang off. Well, all of a sudden, she decided she was going to fucking lean into this turn. <laughs> and when you do that, the fucking bike went with it and yanked my fucking foot off the floorboard, underneath my saddlebags, fucked up my boots, and nearly broke my damn ankle. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Wasn't that the bear crossing well, this that is was going. Same, that was yeah. This was same going road. up to the visitor center. Yes, to the in, visitor center yeah, in National Park. Yeah, that's why I, I was so that. fucking pissed yeah. when we got off the bikes. Yeah. And then you, you know, allegedly broke federal law. Allegedly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> allegedly is the key word there. But yeah, I mean, I don't mind having her on the back. But if if we're gonna be, you know, like I would never, I don't ever, 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 ever want to take her to the tail of the dragon. And no, have her ride. no, no. Never. I will not have a passenger going down that road. You know, we'll never do it. I just damn, it's that bad, huh? Y- yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're you don't get out of second gear on a crotch rocket, that entire stretch. Jeez. Well, okay, I should say I <laughs> didn't get out of second gear, and I didn't. I wasn't comfortable on my Jixer, but I stayed the fuck in second gear, and I was just I you know let the the engine do my braking for me and i still needed it it was that bad i mean it's an awesome ride it is but no because one turn you're going to counter lean the other turn you're going to lean deep into it and try to drag your knee i mean not to scare people but it's <laughs> it's a fucking great you don't no, go really. there if you don't know what to do no like, i mean really you should you should be scared because that's a damn dangerous road that's yeah. true i mean that's one of the reasons that they took truckers off of that road yeah and i don't know why the fuck truckers would ever want to go down that road because it's it not was, a shortcut I, no. I, I don't know i guess they you know they wanted to scenery they want to see the scenery too yeah. i guess so know, that. a massive fucking cliff all right so before we close Talking about crashes, let's talk about the New Hampshire crash. Fucking hell. God that, damn. It's, for lack of a better fucking term, it's a fucking train wreck. I Dude. Mean, yeah. So when I first heard the story, okay, I saw a truck, trailer, seven bikers dead. I'm like, shit, that's a freak accident. See, I didn't catch the trailer part in the, the article I saw. I just saw a truck cross center line, Yeah. hit 10 bikers, seven died. Okay, so paraphrase the the situation so our listeners who may not have heard about it what what happened so there's a a, a the mc group the jarheads i believe yeah a, a marine corps marine corps motorcycle club the jarheads they were up in laconia for bike week mm-hmm. they were headed back to their hotel okay they were literally like a block 300 away. feet uh, they yeah. were they were a football field away yeah. from their hotel jesus getting ready to turn into their hotel for the evening and this was what kind of truck is a pickup truck? It is a yeah. Dodge twenty five hundred and so a, a long flatbed. Yeah, so it was, yeah. A, it was a Dodge, you know, pickup truck. Had the I believe uh, it was a gooseneck trailer with a car carrier on it. Yeah, 
and he came over uh, center line uh, and for whatever reason started a jackknife trailer was loaded improperly they haven't decided yet at least what I've read but anyways he came across center line I didn't think the trailer was loaded no, I, from what I read, it didn't sound like it was. Yeah. Oh, see? So, like, I, I haven't heard the full story about mm. the trailer yet. From the pictures I saw, there was nothing on the trailer, but it could have fallen off. But he yeah. came around and jackknifed, yeah. went across center line, whatever, and wiped out 10 bikers and killed seven of them. Yeah. Now, it, it didn't say this in any of the reports I read, but MCs ride club style. So they are riding side by side. Well, grip, grip to grip. And, yeah. and well, and they're, you know, right there, they're getting, they're slowing down. They get, yeah. Getting ready to turn into their hotel. And and this is why I do not ride club style. Because, well, it could have helped. And I'm, I'm not going to judge these guys for whatever they were doing um, from a riding perspective. But this type of accident, when you have something crossing center line, that's when your lead bike can then go from the left track over to the right track and maybe avoid it true yeah, yeah. um but yeah. when you're riding club style you you can't there's no uh, right track for you because there's another bike already there yeah so yeah i don't know how they were riding what like what position or anything like that all of them from what i read were over 40 mm-hmm. uh, all over 40 years of age i think most of them had helmets i'm not sure <laughs> uh but but yeah all died from blunt force trauma every yeah. single one of them Ugh. yep fuck yeah so the guy, who I don't know his name, don't give a fuck. He uh, you couldn't pronounce it even if you saw it. Yeah, he's from the Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's been in the U.S. on a work visa, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a green card. Green but, cards. Yeah. Not a full blown citizen. Correct. Not I mean not that it really fucking matters. Doesn't fucking matter, but that it'll play into the story later. But he has been. He's had multiple DUIs mm-hmm. in multiple states. Mm-hmm. Just three months ago, he flipped an 18-wheeler in Baytown, Texas, near Houston. Yep, That's where we stayed at for um, the races. Yep. Uh, a, a week before that, he got pulled over, and they found a crack pipe on him. Yeah. And, and he's been, he's been I don't know, ticketed or charged for multiple possession charges. Yeah. Uh, so just, that's it's, why it's this— a fucking train wreck. That's why it was such a train wreck to me, because the, the information trickled out. Uh, so when I first read it, it was a truck and a trailer. It was a you could tell it was a big truck, a mm-hmm. big trailer. I was like, oh shit! So it's probably a commercial driver. I was thinking, probably, you know, had been working for too long. Probably fell asleep, crossed over, and then I heard it was a 23 year old driver. I was like, either he was asleep or he was on his phone. Yep. And then I heard that they were coming back from a charity ride. Then I heard they were 300 feet away from their hotel. And it just, it got worse and worse and worse. And then it started coming out of who this guy was. Oh, yeah. And then all of his fucking offenses that he's got. Every single offense. And I'm like, first off, if, and so this is where I get confused. I haven't heard this yet, but he does have a CDL. He was working for a commercial transport company. That has multiple violations as well. Multiple violations within the company. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how other states do it, but in Texas, CDLs are a fucking powder keg. No, no, you that's, get that's national. That's, okay, that's so. That's federal level. Yeah. Okay, so, so how some the fuck of the things, did he keep this license? Some of the things that I've read, don't know how true it is, is that something in the police reports wasn't completed properly and processed forward to be reported yeah, to, to his home state. Bullshit. To his home state. Which is Massachusetts? Something like that. I think so. I mean, and there's been people resigning, yes. losing their jobs because oh, of yeah. this accident. So the, what the commissioner or some oh, shit yeah, like the, that resigned just like hours before he pled not guilty to all this. Yeah. Which, fuck you for pleading not guilty. Yeah, That's all I got to say. It's our justice system for you. Dude. Well, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, one, he's on a green card. How is he still in the states? Exactly from from the first possession oh, right. charge. The first possession. Yeah. The first DUI. Well, DUIs. It's a little tricky. Why? How does it fall in? I don't know the laws, so I'm so actually asking. You it's why. not a felony. Okay. If it's a felony DUI, what if you get a second one? <laughs> well, it's still not a felony. No, I think it's the third one. It becomes that's a such felony. Bullshit, dude. But that's that's state to state. That's yeah. such bullshit. But. The first DUI should have killed a CDL, which meant he couldn't oh, yeah. work. 
which then his work visa is gone. But see, that's the thing is the truck he was driving did not require CDL, at least in Texas. I don't know if that... But if you're driving commercially, if you're driving, you have to have a CDL. Really? Yes. Yeah. No matter what type of truck you're driving. Like if you see... Have you seen the like the 3,500 trucks pulling stuff and they have the text dot or the yeah, yeah, DOT yeah. stuff on it? As soon as it has that on there, you have to have a CDL. Yeah. So when does that become, like, for example, like the Amazon drivers, do they have to have a CDL? Um, I don't know. I don't think so because Because according to Jim Adler, a commercial vehicle is anything that is used to transport goods or people. See, that, that's just a commercial vehicle. Commercial that's vehicle. a company vehicle. Yeah. So it comes down to length of vehicle, I think. So if they're pulling... Length, length and weight. Yeah. I know it, a lot has to do with weight and axle count, too. Yeah. yeah. Which he was, he was only at four axles and... An empty trailer so i don't know did he need a, a a cdl for that specific trip well even if you have your cdl suspended there's still repercussions that happen to your yeah. class a yeah i'm playing devil's advocate here but still fuck your this guy and fuck everything class he stands c? for class c drivers which one's the normal it, people it depends on yeah class c is the normal okay yeah so i don't know i i think first off you can plead not guilty. You're still going to court, and the court of public opinion is still going to win that one. No, oh, and, and, and it's already, they've already came out and said that as soon as he, they're done with this case, he's deported. He's he's gone back to the Ukraine. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, so, what does that mean for his? Like, does he get put into custody in you in the Ukraine? Or no, no, no he'll serve his no, time. He'll serve here, his time here, and then oh, they'll kick so, his ass out. You know, if he gets not sentenced, it. yeah. So if he gets sentenced to thirty years or whatever, he serves. He'll serve his time here in the states, and then once he gets out, he'll go straight from being released. Are they going the after involuntary manslaughter on him? Homicide, I think, is what I saw. Well, so it, it's all verbiage. You know, any death that is not "quote unquote" natural, and there haven't been any natural deaths in like forty years, based on how they word things nowadays. If I shoot you in self-defense, you're coming at me and you're attacking me, and I shoot you and kill you. That's a homicide. Yeah, it's a person killing a person. That's, it's yeah. homicide. Uh, it's it's all in how they're gonna how they're gonna label it. He did not have intent yeah. to, to murder seven people. However, they will count in was there any kind of negligence, gross negligence. Mm-hmm. So it'll be it's it's like when you kill someone uh, drunk driving. Yep. Yeah, that's involuntary in, manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter. You didn't mean to kill anybody, but what you were doing caused has, the has, death. You we also need to point out that this piece of shit refused a uh, blood test. After oh, yeah, the, he, after hid the for, he hid for like two, seven three, hours. Was it two, three days or something like that? He no, talked it was with, within, the, within he, 24 hours he, he was talked, in custody. He talked with the police shortly at the scene for what yeah. they had. And then he took off. And then released it. And he was gone for, well, I'm going to say a couple of days. And it could not be reached by anyone. Yeah. And we're, we're fucking picking at straws here. Yeah. But, but yeah. No, right. Fuck this guy. He's a piece of shit. I almost hope he doesn't get charged so all those fellow Marines can get a hold of him. That's 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 what I'm saying. I mean, some, that'd be some nice. Some street justice. Some fucking yeah. street justice. Have him disappear off the face of the planet slowly. Piece by piece. <laughs> piece by fucking piece. I just, the thing that annoys the shit out of me is the fact that we as citizens are going to have to pay for all this. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, all the court costs and... It's what thirty thousand dollars a year to keep someone in prison. Yep. And you know it's not going to be a quick case. Oh no! Fuck this'll, no! This will be on for years. years. Yeah. So I I don't know. Anyways, it kind of sucks ending on a somber note. However, it's it's important for people to understand that you always have to keep your head on a swivel whenever yep. you're riding and do whatever you can to you know take whatever precautions you can to be able to avoid something like this happening and it's it's tough but as a as a writer understand that you're at the highest risk when you are slowing down and you are looking to make a turn somewhere that's one of the highest risk areas for any biker yep um so proof just stay aware and be safe out there Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at 
www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be dead, dude. I like, I like dead, dude.